welcome to tonight's Bible study. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, 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 yeah. hey. Good evening to our virtual audience as well as our in-person <coughs> audience. Welcome to Kelly Shell Ministries. We will be in Ruth chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2 and our Bible study theme tonight is kindness. Last week we talked about committed, right? Mm -hmm. No, not last week. Two weeks ago we talked about being committed, right? Mm -hmm. And then last week we talked about bitterness, right? Mm -hmm. You guys were here last week, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about bitterness and this week our Bible study theme will be kindness again welcome 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 to our in person everybody that is in person also welcome to our virtual audience hey i hope everybody's having a great week this thus far uh give you a couple seconds to get on again we are give me the thumbs up if you guys can hear good in the virtual world <laughs> why are you giving me thumbs up when you in person <laughs> <laughs> To our virtual world, give me thumbs up if everybody is good with hearing. We're good? Okay. And so let's get started again. We are in Ruth chapter 2. Our Bible study theme is kindness. Again, welcome to Kelly Shaw Ministry Tuesday evening Bible study. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come into your presence to study your word. Lord God, it is my prayer that you open every ear to hear, every heart to receive, all that it is that you would have for us to receive. And dear God, I will be so careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise because I recognize that it all belongs to you. And so, Lord, as we have pulled up a chair, um, sitting, ready to dive into your word with hearts of anticipation, Lord, I just ask that um, you do like only you can do, and that is exceed our expectation tonight. Meet us here in the word. Allow me as the vessel um, that you are using to teach tonight. Allow me to flow with you and to follow your lead. And so, God, again, it is in Jesus' name that I pray this prayer. Every believer under my sound of my voice says, Amen. Amen. Right. And for those of you who are in the virtual war world, your amen can be typed in the comments section. And again, if this Bible study is blessing you, don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. Feel free to share this um, live with someone else. Uh, again, we are in Ruth chapter 2, and our theme is kindness. And so to give a recap, we are, we've been in Ruth for now. This is our third week. To give a recap, the first week we talked about being committed, what it looks like to be fully committed. And Ruth gives us the example of what it means to be fully committed. We see that Ruth, uh, the book of Ruth started off chapter one with three women who had um, um, one thing in common, and that is they all lost their husband. Um, not only did they lose, well, two of them, three of them lost, all three lost their husband, but one woman lost not only just her husband, but she lost her children, her two sons also. And so she's wanting to, the woman by the name of Naomi wants to return home to Bethlehem. She had been living in a foreign country um, with her husband and two sons prior to their death. Um, while they were there, her two sons married to Moabite women um, who were from that particular country, the country being that of Moab. But now that all of this has happened, Naomi wants to return home. Two women, her two daughter-in-laws, one uh, they decided to go back with her. And then one, after some urging, one after one, uh, some urging from the mother-in-law, which is Naomi, um, after urging, a couple of urgings, the one daughter-in-law decides to turn back, but the other daughter-in-law, who is Ruth, continues on with her until they arrive into the country or place of Bethlehem in Judah. And so we've seen in chapter one, we saw in uh, that lesson when we were talking about being committed, we've seen how Orpah, which is one daughter-in-law who started off committed to um, her mother-in-law as far as going back 
to her country, to Bethlehem. She started off, but then after a couple of urgings, she decides to turn back. So we look at that as partial commitment, but we look at Ruth as full commitment because she stuck it all the way out. She went all the way with her. She resisted all the urgings to turn back and she kept with it and she stayed with it. She persevered through the, uh, the urging. She resisted it and she ended up going back with her. Then we talked about last week about bitterness. We talked about how um, Naomi, because of all the loss that she suffered, um, her difficult circumstances that she had um, endured, how she ended up um, becoming bitter because of all the things that had went wrong in her life. We saw that with bitterness where she was even willing to change her name from Naomi. When she got back to Bethlehem, people were wondering, was that her? You know, they were saying, oh, is that Naomi? She was telling people, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, meaning that she was willing to define, she had defined herself by her circumstances, meaning that she no longer wanted to be known as Naomi. Naomi in the Hebrew, uh, is, uh, it means uh, pleasant, and Mara, who she wanted to be known as, meant bitter. So she allowed her bitter circumstances to consume her so much so to where she wanted to be defined by it, not by just herself, but she wanted others to know her by that name. And so here tonight, we're going to focus our attention on this idea of kindness. And so who we're going, our case study tonight will be that of Ruth. Mm -hmm. Ruth, we see Ruth, 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 Ruth. We're back at Ruth. And so here in the text, Ruth is now in Judah. She's now in Bethlehem. Her and Naomi, they made the trip back. They um, went the distance. They're now in Bethlehem. And so now Ruth is our case study tonight where we're going to see this kindness. Again, we saw the kindness first in chapter one. Do you guys remember? Mm -hmm. Virtual world, do y'all remember? Uh, the first week where we saw where when um, Naomi was urging her two daughter-in-laws to go back, she basically told them in chapter one, I mean, she told Naomi, Naomi tells Ruth and Orpah to go back. When she first started trying to urge them to go back home, she was telling them how kindly they had been, not only just to her, but also to the dead meaning the dead, their dead husband, how they had shown kindness. They had been kind to her, even while they, her sons were alive and even after their death, how they had been kind to her. Now that's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a subject matter that we can actually spend all day on because sometimes people don't really get along with their in-laws and at the death of a relationship, usually people say deuces to their in-laws if they really wasn't really gelling with them, right? <laughs> And so she had already been kind to Naomi in Moab. But what I want us to see and recognize now with this kindness, because Ruth is a kind person, meaning that she has, kind, you know, kindly, she had been kindly to her mother-in-law, meaning that it, she encompassed this mercy for this weaker vessel, if you will, because Naomi is an older woman, right? Mm -hmm. And so she had been kind, you know, she had shown her goodwill and concern and, you know, everything about that story in chapter one, we can see that she really cared about this woman, right? Mm -hmm. And so she had dealt kindly with her. Are you with me? Everybody with me? Thumbs up if you're following me. Mm -hmm. And so we see here that the kindness began in Moab, right? But we will see here in chapter two that the kindness shows up in chapter two as well. How so? Let me tell you how so. She was kind in Moab, right? Mm -hmm. Here we are in Bethlehem. She was kind on the road because she continued with the woman. She went with the um, with Naomi back to Bethlehem, right? She didn't dip. She didn't dip on her part way through it. She didn't wait till she got to Bethlehem and then dipped on her. She stayed with her and she has this concern for this older woman, her mother-in-law. And so what I want to show us is 
as we're looking in chapter two, it says that Ruth, in verse two, Ruth said to Naomi, again, they had gotten there, they, they're there. She says, let me go to the fields and pick up leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes, eyes I find favor. Remember at the bottom of chapter one, when they were coming into Bethlehem, it was barley harvest, meaning it was a season where people would harvest barley. And then after barley harvest, then it would follow the wheat harvest, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is barley season that they have returned to Bethlehem. And so while there, Ruth decides, she asked Naomi, she says, let me go into the field and glean some leftovers. So here she's wanting to go to work. Let me give you some understanding behind this idea of gleaning. Gleaning, um, the definition of gleaning is to pick up leftovers. It means to pick up. Remember, she's going, she wants to go to the field. The field as being somebody, when people own plots of land or whatever, they would harvest. Meaning that they would sow, you mean they would plant in, uh, in some season and then in another season they would reap the harvest. Yeah. So it was time for them to reap the harvest of what they had planted and what they had planted Barley had came up. And so she wanted to go to the field to glean. Not harvest, but glean. Gleaning means that she wanted to pick up what was dropped, what was left behind. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some history on this harvest issue. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 22, and in Leviticus 19, verse 9 through 10, God tells Moses to give these instructions to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. His, in, in Leviticus 23, 22, it says, that, and this is the, uh, the New King James Version I'm, re I'm reading from, I'm quoting from. It says, when you reap, this is God talking to Moses and Moses instructing the people. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap nor shall you gather any gleanings from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. In other words, for the foreigner. I am the Lord, your God. And then in Leviticus 19, it reads similar, KJV, nine through 10. When you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shall thou gather the gleanings of the harvest, neither glean, glean the vineyard, Neither shall thy gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shall leave for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord. So she wants to go glean because she understands she's not the owner of the field, but they do have a right to glean in fields because God had established that way back when, that when you, if you and I owned a field, even though we paid for the seeds and all that kind of stuff, God established that we would not be able to take everything in off of our land. He made a, it was a requirement that we had to leave some things behind for the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, what better shape this world could be in mm -hmm. if we still practice things oh, like yeah. that. Yes. You know, we are in a society that is just so greedy uh -huh. where we don't, we're not leaving nothing behind. Right. Mm -hmm. And so God had established that, meaning that they could not clear their whole lands. Like the corners, every corner of their land, they could not harvest. That was left for the poor. Mm -hmm. And also, as we've seen in Leviticus 19, if you, if you, um, if you it talked about if uh, neither shall thou gather the gleanings, the gleanings is what left was left behind. If you saw that you gathered and you harvest, and okay, you let might have left the corners, but even if you harvested where you were supposed to harvest, if you drop something, you're not supposed to go back to get it. <laughs> that was left for the poor or the stranger. Ain't God good? Yeah. God was even yeah. thinking about. The, the poor man, even before we were even thought of, if you will. Uh -huh. 
So God is not just concerned about the rich or the, the middle class or the high class. He's also concerned about our poor. Okay, he's concerned about the ones that's standing on the corner holding the signs up. He's concerned about everybody. Mm -hmm. So much so that where we think that where God is not concerned about the, the little guy or the poor guy, yes, he is concerned because he's concerned enough to have it in his law, Levitical law, that you are not allowed. Even Yes, your field. Yes, you might have paid for the seed, but you're going to help take care of the poor. Because the poor matters. And so here we have, so she's going to glean. So we do understand this idea of gleaning, right? Mm -hmm. Virtual world, thumbs up if you're, you're rocking with me. So we have this understanding of what gleaning is. So she asked, she tells, she asked Naomi, she says, let me go and glean in a field, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning she says, she says, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone whose eyes I find favor. So we're talking about kindness. What we can see is she is willing to go to work. She didn't just get back to get to Bethlehem and she just like, you know what, we we're gonna have to figure we gonna have to figure this out. No, she leaves Naomi because again, Naomi is older. She goes by herself to go to work. So there we still see this idea of this kindness. Her kind heartedness towards this woman was her willingness not just to go to glean for herself. She was going to glean for them. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying here? This kindness, we can see that her kindness goes a long way. Help me understand that, preacher. Okay, I'm glad you asked. It goes a long way because it started in Moab, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. It continued on the road because she stayed with her. They arrived in Bethlehem and she's still being kind because she's willing to go to work for this woman because she doesn't want to see her hungry. She doesn't want to see her without. So we can say the kindness stretch is stretched from Moab. When I say it goes a long way, it, I mean that literally. I mean that figuratively and literally. It stretched from Moab where it began all the way to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So we can see that kindness, our kindness stretches a long way. It goes a long way. It is believed that the distance from Moab to Bethlehem was 60 miles. That's a long stretch of miles, right? Mm -hmm. Especially not in, it's a long way in the car, kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. They walking. They walking. Mm. They're walking. Two women, vulnerable, from no protection of no men, vulnerable, walking mm -hmm. from Moab to Bethlehem. Again, she had already been kind to the woman in Moab. Mm -hmm. She then traveled this road leading to Bethlehem, and now they're in Bethlehem, and she's still being kind? Boy, I tell you, kindness goes a long mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And so the question I have tonight is, how kind are you? Mm. Does your kindness go a long way? Or does your kindness, like Orpah, Stop in Moab. Can your kindness endure 60 miles of road? <laughs> I'll be too honest. Right? <laughs> How, I mean, I'm talking about kindness. <laughs> Sometimes we have a limit to how kind we are. We see that same person on the corner. I just gave him a dollar yesterday. But you but but you got it mm -hmm. to give, but you decide, like Orpah, I'm only gonna do it One time. One time. Mm -hmm. right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're only willing to be kind in your community, but there is another community across town. Amen. Oh, it's mm -hmm. too dangerous over there. I ain't going up over there. Uh -huh. 
what you mean get out the car and uh, take meals? Mm -hmm. They might, you know what kind of car I drive? They might steal my car. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're only kind to the people in our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. But our kindness, like here in the example of Ruth, our kindness should stretch. It should go further than mm -hmm. our community. It mm -hmm. should go further than just right here. Sometimes our, again, our kindness, let me talk about that kindness again. They were in Moab. They were a family in Moab. And sometimes your kindness only goes to family. And that's it. I don't know them. I'm only going to worry about me and mine. But here, Ruth shares with us an example of how her kindness is stretching, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively. But not only that, we see here that her kindness is consistent. It didn't just stretch from Moab to Bethlehem because she's still, you know, her willingness to work. But she went to work in the field. Mm -hmm. This wasn't no easy task. But she's consistent. It's consistent. It's constant. She didn't just do it one time. I'm going to just show you kindness one time, you know, in Moab. She, she's, there's this consistency. Again, it's stretching, but it's also consistent. It's not, no, maybe I will, mm -hmm. maybe I won't. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a ride. There that light go again. <laughs> I'll give you a ride this week, maybe not next week. Mm -hmm. her, ki her kindness goes a long way, but it's also, it's continual. It's consistent. Again, she worked from dawn to dusk. It says she worked all day. That's consistent. She didn't start working and been like, you know what? I can't, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. She worked. Who's willing to go that far? Mm -hmm. Who's willing to be that consistent with their kindness? Mm -hmm. Constantly doing something nice. We don't see nothing at this point that Naomi has done for Ruth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it still mm -hmm. doesn't stop mm -hmm. Ruth's consistency in doing good towards Naomi. Let's park. I'm parking a caddy tonight. You remember how we used to do that? Why did we used to drive like this when we back up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we back up like this and seat be all the way back. I'm gonna park real quick. <laughs> There's times where, where do I want to go with this? Sometimes we can start something and our motives for doing something may not be pure. I don't know if I want to say pure or Sometimes we do stuff because we know somebody else is going to return the favor. Okay, here comes Christmas right now. There's somebody mad right now because last year they got somebody some, and this year they saying to themselves, I bet I don't get them none. They ain't give me none last year. Right? And, right. Anything. But her hers is consistent because she's not, it's not based on what Naomi can do for her. Because at this point, there's nothing at this point in the text. It doesn't seem like there's nothing that, it's not 50-50. They helping each other. It seemed like Ruth is doing all the work. Naomi at the crib, chilling. <laughs> Ruth is doing the work. She working all day. They didn't say that. Naomi came down and been like, oh, I thought I'd bring you a, a piece of fruit or I'll just come down here to talk to you for a little bit while you're doing this. I may not be able to do everything that you're doing, but maybe I can keep you some company or I'll walk you halfway down there. It don't say none of that, but she's still consistent. 
right? It's making us think about some things, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we get to the point to we're only kind to others because they're kind back to us. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a woman. This is a woman who renamed herself bitter. So dealing with somebody bitter ain't, I don't feel like it would be an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. But yet she's consistent. Yet she's stretching her kindness. Her kindness is going a long way and she's consistent with it. It's not based on conditions. She's doing it out the kindness of her heart. Mm -hmm. She didn't let her say, she didn't leave home and says, you know what, I'm going to do this, but tomorrow you're going to have to do it. We're going to have to take turns. Mm -hmm. Now, that would have been my story. Like, yo, I know you might not be able to, uh, maybe you can do a couple hours. I might do six. You can at least do two. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't see, there's no negotiation. We don't see no negotiations going on here. Mm -hmm. But sometimes with our kindness, we're negotiating. Mm -hmm. We're doing it with conditions. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows we, we ain't stretching it. Right? But that's something that we should be working on as a Christian, right? But let's look at 8 and 9 and 10. It says that, okay, so at this point, up until this point, um, the owner of the field by the name of Boaz, he returns to the field and he's greeting his um, servants and things that are you know, har his harvesters and things like that. But then he takes notice to uh, Ruth and he's, he's questioning his, the manager who he has managing the harvesters. And he's questioning like, who is this young woman? And he gets the story about this woman, you know, who she is. This is a uh, Ruth the Moabite who came back with Naomi. And so then, and when we see in verse eight, it says, so ba Boaz says to my daughter, he says, to Ruth, he says, my daughter, listen to me. Don't glean, don't go glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. And he says, watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. And so in 10, it says, at this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. And she basically asked him, she says, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? And then Boaz replies to her response by saying, I've been told all about what you have done, right? Mm -hmm. For your mother-in-law since mm -hmm. the death of your husband, how you left your father, mother, and your homeland. Mm -hmm and came to live with the people you did not know before. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, may the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. Okay, so what is happening here? Ruth's kindness, which brought her to the field, right? You know, it went a long way. It came from Moab to Bethlehem, it, now it's been consistent because she's working in the field. But now we see that her kindness is producing favor. But notice this isn't coming from the one she's serving. Ah. Mm. Oh, okay. She's saying basically he's showing her favor. Because let me let's talk about the favor first and then we'll revisit that. The favor that she is receiving is she now has an invitation to come to the field. You don't see that? Mm -hmm. I see your somebody's face turned tuned up. He says, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Gotcha. Stay here with the women who work for me. So before she had, she asked, could she glean in the field? Actually, let's park there. Let's go back there. She asked permission. Look, how, look at her character. She asked permission to glean 
in the field. Remember what God said. They had poor people and strangers, which is another word for foreigners. They had a right to glean. So why does she ask permission? <clears throat> that just speaks to her character again. And so she went from asking permission to now being invited. Okay, so we have an invitation here. But not only do we have an invitation, she also has unlimited access to water. Do y'all see that? Do you really see that? Somebody's looking like, what you talking about, Woos? I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. It says, that's where it says in verse 9, thank you very much. Whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. Whenever you are thirsty, whenever you are thirsty, that allows us to know that she had unlimited access to that provision. So the favor, she had an invitation. She, now she's welcomed to the field. She has unlimited access to resources. Water, right? And so not only that, she says, he says, glean with who? Then he tell her to... Stay with some people, some um, translations read maidens. Stay here with the women who work for me. Mm -hmm. So now she's being, she's not even being looked upon as a charity case, if you will, almost like, right? Mm -hmm. Because wasn't the gleaning for poor people? Mm -hmm. But now he's saying, you don't have to be with that group anymore. You can come up here with the women, my workers. So there's a lot of favor that's going on here. But again, let me back back up to what I had my initial statement. Notice that this kindness that's being returned to her, being shown to her, is not coming from the one who she showed the kindness to. to. I need us to get this because it took me a long. I remember when I was going through a real, real tough season in my life and I felt like some things was unfair and there were some things that God was asking of me. He wanted, he was asked, I was not being treated properly and I felt like it was unfair and God was still requiring me to do good to those who was not treating me good. Now that's a hard thing to do. Be kind mm -hmm. when it wasn't coming back to me. Mm -hmm. Continually being a Christian, continually being nice, continually being good, not taking, not being revengeful, mm -hmm. not being bitter, not doing tit for tat. That was a hard season in my life. I couldn't understand how am I, why, how come I gotta be good to this person and I'm not getting it back? What happened to this reaping and sowing? Uh -huh. Sometimes, Hear me good. Sometimes you may be sowing kindness in somebody's life who is not being kind back to you or not, or you're not, it's not being reciprocated uh -huh. for whatever reason. In her case, Naomi didn't have the wherewithal or the means to do it back with her. Again, she's older. Mm -hmm. But what about some of us? Again, that Christmas present you didn't get last year, <laughs> that you're choosing not to give them nothing. Just because you're not reciprocating, you're not getting it back there, doesn't mean God is not going to reward you. you we have to get to the place to where we understand where our blessings is coming oh from. God. You keep sowing good. You keep sowing kindness. You keep being good to people. And I promise you, 
you will get it back. You may not get it back where you exactly Amen. where you sold yes. it, but you're going to get it back. Yes. And sometimes it may not be that you'll get the person may not be able to do it. Be you know, show show that uh, or repay you if you will in the magnitude that you have done. But that's good right there. Y'all see that? So we need to change our mindset. And I know it's hard when you didn't work real hard and wrap that gift up and it's nice and you all excited and then they say thank you, but then you waiting around like, well, where mine? You like a you like a fiend, like we're mine, you know, like we're mine. And then um they tell you some she's oh, you know, I I I'm 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 I'll get you, I'm gonna get you next time. And in your mind, you, I mean, out your mouth, you'd be like, oh, it's okay. But in your mind, you'd be like, they could have got me something. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got a job. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But out our mouths, we saying, oh, it's okay. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, it, mm -mm. it's all right. You could have got me something. Something. Uh -huh. Could have got me something from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> you know, that's what we say. Uh -huh. But here in this case study, this kindness that we're seeing, it does produce favor. Again, she was receiving favor, but not from the one who she had been kind to. How are we doing on time? How she been kind to? Again, this favor that she was getting again, this is Boaz being kind to her. He's saying, you know, you're, you were invited. You're welcomed into this field. And I mean, you can, I want you to follow. He's, he's basically sharing with her some tips. He's giving her some wisdom. You follow behind the women. And then help yourself to unlimited resources. He didn't say, take you a cup or two. He said, unlimited. Now, you know, many of us, we would have just sat there. Some of us so greedy, we would have sat there by the water. We wouldn't have been working. We'd have been just drinking up the water. Oh, boy. Right. Mm -hmm. I ain't going back out there. <laughs> and so not only that, as we continue to look, look at verse 11. Well, let me stop. Any questions, comments? <laughs> Any questions, comments? We good? We good? Mm -hmm. Everybody can still hear virtually? Good, 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 good. Again, don't be stingy. If you uh, feel free, if you're being blessed by this, this um, live, share it, share it, share it. So in verse eleven, okay. Remember in verse ten, she says, you know, basically she, you know, she humbled herself, she bowed herself down to the ground after he said all this. You know, he showed her this favor, and she asked him, "Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner?" Boaz replied to her, I've been told all about what you've done. Remember we talked about how she, he told, he ran down to her all that he had heard that she had done for her mother-in-law since the death of her husband and, you know, how she left her country, how she left her father and mother and all of this stuff that he's telling her, how he had heard about all the wonderful things that she had done concerning Naomi and all the sacrifices that she made because, again, we see all that, right? So then we see here what is happening here when he's telling her all this. Basically, what we're seeing here is her kindness gets recognition. Right? We like a little recognition. Come on, let's not even... You know, we like our names mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so her kindness. Now, notice she didn't go around popping her own collar, talking about, yep, you know, I've been down here with old Naomi. Mm -hmm. You know, she owed her. I'm out here in this field working for her. Mm -hmm. I used to be married to her, um, her son, but he died. She wasn't down there telling all of her business. Mm -hmm. Somebody else was doing the talking about how good and how kind and all the things that she had done. And so what, what this has done is the, her works, her kindness spoke for itself, mm -hmm. meaning that she didn't have to go around bragging about all that she'd done. He heard about it. Can we be like Naomi? Do we always have to go around telling everybody what we have done, done for somebody? You know, uh, I'm down here with Naomi. <laughs> I, I traveled 60 miles. On foot. Ooh, <laughs> I don't I don't live here. I'm 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 from Moab. 
But you know, she's older and frail. I, I came on down with her to help her because she ain't got no husband or no son. I'm young, you know, I still got my whole life ahead of me, but I, I want to do something nice for her. She didn't do that. She wasn't in the field picking up stuff to my mouth. You know, I, I'm the one that brought her back. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that look like for some of us? You know, I um, I, I cut I I cut my grass and their grass. Mm -hmm. Or you know, I get to church early and I open up the building and I make sure um, the, the walkway is cleared off and things like that, you know, and then they pull the pants all up like this. Yeah, you know, I'm, <coughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the church before everybody gets here. Yeah. You know, I, I give every year, you know, I make sure that um, I give uh, a certain amount to uh, the homeless shelters and I, 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 um, I write checks to this charity and that charity and, you know, she didn't do any of that. Hmm. Or, nor does she sit somewhere and upset because nobody has recognized, I mean, ha nobody has recognized or gave her any recognition for all her good deeds. You know how you can tell when your kindness is what you've done or your accomplishments that you, the accomplishments that you made. You, you, want me, you want me to tell you how you can tell when you're operating in the wrong spirit or when your motives are not pure, is when you're in a setting where people are getting recognized and somebody forgets to recognize you and you're pissed or you're mad or you're angry. Sitting there pretending like everything is all right, mm -hmm. but steaming, boiling, because they didn't say nothing about you. Mm -hmm. Or everybody is around and everybody's exchanging gifts and opening gifts and everybody's talking about such and such gift, but nobody recognizes what you've done. She didn't do that. Her kindness produces recognition. She was acknowledged by somebody else. Hmm. So with our kindness, are we being kind just to get recognized for somebody else to acknowledge us? Do we give gifts just so people can say, look what so sister so-and-so so gave me, or look what brother so-and-so gave me. Yeah. Hmm. Do we do that? And are we mad when it seems like our good deeds are going unnoticed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so her kindness, again, it gained recognition, but not, she didn't pop her own collar, she didn't recognize herself wouldn't that be something? I like to recognize myself. <laughs> I like to recognize myself for all the wonderful things that I have done for society. I like to recognize my, me, myself. I want to nominate me. That sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. But it sounds crazy because I'm saying it out loud. But in our hearts, do we feel that? Do we feel that? But not only that, notice he says how she left. Her father, her mother, her homeland, to and came to live with the people that she didn't even know before. So what is that? It shows us that her kindness that she extended to this woman, Naomi, was, hey, here's this big word that we do not like, sacrifice. She left the comforts of her homeland to help somebody else. Mm. She left her mama and her daddy to come help somebody else. Mm -hmm. So her kindness is a sacrifice. And so is, I, so is ours. Our kindness is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do it when it doesn't take us out of our comfort zone. She's out of her comfort zone. She's in a foreign country. She ain't got nobody but Naomi. Mm -hmm. 
It wasn't like everybody died in Moab that she ever knew and she just came there to start afresh. She got a whole mama and a whole daddy, a whole family in Moab. Yet she left the comfort of her country, everything she known, her native land. That would be like one of us leaving the United States to go to another country to help mama, <laughs> to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. oh. Kindness is at times it's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's a sacrifice. Are we willing for our kindness to be a sacrifice where we're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. where it takes us out of our comfort zone? Mm -hmm. I'm not used to that. I don't know about that. I ain't even. I like to be comfortable. Are you willing to get up out of your bed at 11 o'clock on a work night to go help? Not your family member. That crazy cousin that keep messing up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you willing to get out of your bed at 2 o'clock in the morning to go check on that one that's addicted mm -hmm. where they calling you on the phone talking about can you come pick me up well, she ain't coming to my house she been and stole everything while I'm asleep too mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it requires a sacrifice sometimes it robs us of our comfort can you are you willing to give somebody a ride to work that works in the total opposite direction of where you work. That means you got to get up an extra 30 minutes mm -hmm. to make sure they got their car broke down. Mm -hmm. Can you take me for the next couple of weeks while my, they, you know, they got to order the parts for my car. But you work east and they work way up north. Mm. Oh, if I take you to work, that means I got to get up at four. Mm. Kindness is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It is. And again, it may, you may have to help that person that don't have the capacity or the ability to return the favor. Y'all quiet tonight. We was talking chat. We were chatty Kathy last week. And I'm talking to myself too because this is a challenging uh, text. So again, kindness is a sacrifice. It, but notice she says also, when she talks about, in 13, may I continue to find favor in your eyes, she said, listen to what she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. Hmm. Now we're talking about his kindness. And remember, he showed his faith. His kindness towards her because she's because of her kindness remember she's saying your kindness right let's go back to it do y'all see where i'm going with this mm -hmm. you have put me at ease by speaking kindly to me so here we see that kindness puts other people at ease in order for her to say that him speaking kindly to her put her at ease gives us the connotation that she had to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So here she is showing kindness to her mother-in-law by going into the field to work, yet she's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. She's not at ease. She only becomes at ease when someone else kindly speaks to her. Mm. Everything that he's saying to her, now you're invited, right? Drink as much water as you want. But prior to this conversation, she was not at ease. Mm -hmm. But kindness places, puts others at ease. And also to add to that, I didn't even think about that, but I'm thinking about it now. Kindness is uncomfortable can be uncomfortable again she was not at ease prior to this and so 
as we move through this text, we see this theme of kindness again. We see again where kindness, her kindness, Ruth's kindness stretched. It stretched from one place to the next. It Again, just like with her kindness goes a long way, our kindness should go a long way. Her kindness was consistent. Our kindness needs to be consistent. And because of all of that, her, the kindness, her kindness, her willingness to be kind to someone else produced favor in her life, meaning that someone else returned the favor into her life, mm -hmm. meaning that there's going to be times in our lives where we'll be going to be kind to a certain per or person or a certain people. We may not get it back there, uh -huh. but I guarantee you, if you keep being kind and you keep being good to others and you keep treating people good and being kind and mm -hmm. loving and caring you will get it back you may not get it back where you're sowing it at mm -hmm. but you will get it back and so that concludes our bible study tonight i pray that you were blessed as i was blessed for teaching that do we have any questions